out of the group, I would say you were the only true stay-at-home mom. Yeah. So it's kind of good to see that aspect. Yeah. Uh, can you just let us know how difficult it that is? It is very is? difficult to the point sometimes people, with, you know, even with this season, when you see the reunion, you're going to see really how difficult that was to overcome the challenges of the women attacking. Because um, here's the reality. Me and my husband could have easily went back to work and made a good amount of money for this household and what, hire somebody that had a fourth of our education to, to raise our kids? What would be the point right. in doing that? It made no sense to us when we both were highly educated individuals and we both loved children. So we were like, no matter what amount of money we made, we were still going to budget a way in which one of us could stay home in their early years. And I mean, it has been so beneficial. Like, I have caught, you don't even understand, I've, some of the things that some parents just are not privy to seeing when they're at work all the time and their children are in daycare settings or, you know, with a nanny. Girl, I've caught them. You know what I'm saying? I've had um, teachers fired for pinching my son underneath his arm. Yeah. Caught, yeah. I've had um, situations where my son wasn't being fed at the school that he was at because the teacher was like, oh, he'll eat eventually. He's a child. He'll get hungry enough. But as a mom who's a stay-at-home mother, I was able to say, you know what, look, I'm only putting my child here two days out the week so that they can literally be fraternized with other kids, but I'm, I'm going to stop up here periodically. I'm going to look through the see-through glass, and I'm going to pay attention to what's going on within that classroom. And a lot of times you're not able to do that when you're working a 40-plus hour job. Now, back to um, the women and what you were saying about them attacking you. It seems like every episode, and as of recently... Girl, it's a fight. Yeah, it's a fight. <laughs> it's and, a struggle. And honestly, they're in your pocket. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, you shouldn't be spending this. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be doing that. Dr. Heavenly saying you shouldn't be... Girl. You, you don't have to put this much earnest money Oh, yeah, down. oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You need to set up for your children's um, long-haul investments. And it's like... How do you know we haven't? You know, <laughs> and so we kind of figured out that a lot of people just like to talk. You right. know, they're like Twitter. Mm -hmm. You know, they just like to say something to stir up something. And so when, once you figure that on, out on reality TV, you can decide whether or not you want to jump right. at the bait. Mm -hmm. Because that's all it is. They're just throwing a worm out there and seeing if you bite. Right. And that's what Heavenly did a lot this season. She threw a lot of worms out there. And it was cool because if you know the truth, then you don't. It doesn't move you. Do you think she's and good for the show? I think she's good for television because she can be funny. Mm -hmm. And because the one thing I do love about Heavenly is that Heavenly's like, I'm just here. We, we not on, we're not on the Cosby show. Mm -hmm. This is a drama. Mm -hmm. This is a comedic drama. Mm -hmm. So let's be funny. Let's have fun with it. Let's not take it personal. Now, does she get to a point where you want to take it personal? <laughs> yes. Yeah, easier said than done. Right. But at the end of the day, I mean, once you know what you're dealing with, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, so we've got to a point now where me and Heavily, if I don't like something she did, I might call her up later and say, you know what? I'm going to have to blast you a little bit on Twitter for that. I'm like, My blog going to have to. You know, it's going to have to let you know, you know. Right. Okay, fine. Well, I'm going to let you know. Okay, we're cool. We're good. We're good, though. We're good. Right. Yeah, cool. And we move on. Yeah. You know. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Is it like that for all of the women on the no. show? No. No. So tell me about <laughs> your relationship with some of the other women. Let's start with um, Simone. You know, right now, me and Simone are at a place where we have not spoken since the reunion. And, um, you know, sometimes I think people just go too far. And I think they want you to accept it. And it's a hard for me to accept it when you are a grown woman and you're educated and you're supposed to be an example for the children and the people in this world, but you are not doing that. You know, and I'm not saying that we don't all make mistakes because I made hella mistakes first season. You know, and even this season, I feel like some areas I could have did better. Um, but I'm not going to say that I did them purposely. Like, nothing I did was on purpose. And so you feel like she's doing I think that a lot of things she's done has been very vindictive and they've been very, they've just been on purpose. And when you do something on purpose, you know, God don't like ugly. I don't either. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, and I have a hard time acting as though I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I try not to be fake. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, well, what's up with you and Mariah now? And it's like, you know, we're good. 
You know what I'm saying? We're as good as it's gonna get. You know what I'm saying? We're not trying to go hang out like we used to, but can we be in the same room? Yeah. Can she say something and it be offensive and but me not take it personal? Yeah. It's okay. You know, quad, we talk and you know, we laugh every now and then. She called me up, girl. I missed that in that episode. Did you see that? Quad mm -hmm. is very passionate. Um, I've learned that she is very passionate is the perfect word for her. You know, when it's something that bothers her, she gets emotional and she lets us know it. Mm. And I'm like, why are you crying? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's okay. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but she's very passionate about things. And I, I guess we all handle things differently. You know what I'm saying? When I get upset, you know, I get, I get mad. But the first thing I do is pray. You know, the second thing I do is I try to take my mind off that situation and think about something else. But when you see me get to a point where you can almost tell when a shift happens for me because it becomes more of a slow speech. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you know this one last time. It's that mama voice. You know, <laughs> you're just like, let me slow it down for you so that you understand. And that's when it becomes to me like, okay, she's gotten to here. But with the other ladies, I mean, I love me some Lisa Nicole. I think she's really positive. Um, I wish she uh, came off a little better this season. A lot of people were like, uh, you know, who's Lisa? And we're like, I love Lisa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I think she's um, a good person. Right. You know, but I don't know if everybody, I don't know if everybody's made for married to medicine. You know, sometimes we, they can be very cutthroat, you know, and... And God forbid, you know, you have to change and become that person just to be on the show. Absolutely. So tell us about your thoughts on this whole beef between <laughs> Mariah and Quad. And how has it changed the dynamic of the group since this happened? You know, it's funny because me and Quad were talking the other day and she said something. And I said, damn, you still can't be in the same room with this girl? <laughs> girl, if you don't get over there. You know, it was like, I just knew she was like so over it right. and past it had finally got all of it out at the reunion and no it was like no like people like people heal differently you know when I'm over somebody I don't care they could be they could be stand they could be sitting in the chair with me it, they would not bother me it would totally whatever it doesn't even matter whoever who are you again oh okay didn't even know you were there you know <laughs> right but there are other people who are like I cannot be in the same vicinity with her because I know what type of person she is I know there's going to be drama that follows her so with that being said I'm just I'm just going to separate myself you know now does that cause issues for us as a cast yeah because we all try to do things together and we don't all want to be put in a situation where we have to choose A B over B. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not like that. Mm -hmm. You know, but I mean, it is TV world. You know, you only have so many cameras. You know, so hopefully we can get them all together over the summer and, you know, at least get us to a point where we're all in the same setting and can function. You're so positive. Yeah, I'm trying to be, girl. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to think right now. Maybe I'll have a basketball tournament of all the men out here and then just invite some of the women to see what happens. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, we'll I'm see. sure they would love that. Yeah. So tell us about this cabin trip because, I mean, that was very interesting. Girl. In the last episode. The cabin trip brought out so many different relationship issues that some of us was like, huh? Wow. Oh, I didn't know that. You know? So not relationships amongst you and the girls or the but guys. But the men and the women. Right. It was like, oh, okay. You know? But the pos here was the positive in it. People were honest about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they were like, we're going to, it is what it is. I'm going to put it out there. You know? And hopefully the world will take it and grow from some of the things that were said. Or maybe they won't. Mm -hmm. You know? And people were like, they laughed at me when they were like, oh, Toya, you got a you know a love note after y'all first after we first had intercourse, me and my husband. Mm -hmm. But dude, when a man is into you, right, uh, you're missing it. You know right. what I'm saying? You want that. Absolutely. You want someone that's like saying, "I treasure that night." You know what I'm saying? And not going back to the next woman after he left you. You know, and and you knew that because he took the time to say it and write it, and then want, and then wanted to see you days and days after. So I mean, it was. It was a lot that came out at the cabin, um, but it was also a point where I felt like the shift, it had shifted for me. It became one of those times where I was like, I'm no longer going to allow for the dishonesty amongst the group. I'm just going to start calling it out. 
you know, I had let it go on for I don't know how long. We would be at a table at a function and somebody would say something and they felt like it was okay to say that. Yeah, no, not anymore. I like that. Yeah. yeah that and everybody was funny because everybody tweeted me too and they were like, thank God. You know, <laughs> were you like sleep, you know? And it wasn't that I was sleep. It was just I was trying to pick my battles. But then I realized that my battle was all these lies and people trying to implant themselves in people's scenes. You know, as if it was like, I'm, a, I'm your girl or I'm your friend. But no, you're not really because you're setting me up. You right. know what I'm saying? So let's be honest about it, you know, and let's move forward with that. Absolutely. You know, that's good TV for me, yes. honestly. So. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So tell us about what you thought about what Lisa's husband said. The cheating? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, funny, she had called me and she was like, can I ask you a question? I'm like, yeah. She was like, how do you think my husband came off? when he made that comment about, um, you know, well, she allowed, she, she kept taking me back. Right. And, and his cheating. Basically separating, you can cheat while you're not married, yeah. but once you're married, I mean, I guess it was a positive I that mean, he didn't cheat while he was married, but. Well, that's, that wasn't said. Oh. <laughs> you know, um, I think at the end of the day, what we, what she and I both took from it was that his version of commitment was very different from my husband's version of commitment. Mm -hmm. And some men are just relationship men. You know, they just like to be in a relationship. And then there's other men who just like a lot of women. Um, and then you have to tame them. You know, um, my husband was, he wasn't a person that needed to be tamed. It was actually the total opposite. You know what I'm saying? He had to settle me down because I'm on the club. And <laughs> he like, I don't want to go to the club. You know, and... We, and I just think that, you know, if he stays true to the commitment that they made in their vows now, then it's a wonderful thing. It's a learning experience that's something he can share with his son and possibly, you know, speak to other men about, you know. But do I agree with him saying that there was, it's okay to cheat? You know, before you're married. No, because it's all a commitment. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a commitment before God or a commitment to me, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. You making a commitment to me before God and you made a commitment to me without God. Or maybe God was present. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God is everywhere, right? Absolutely. Why we need a preacher to say, now you be faithful. <laughs> no, I don't need that. Like, are you going to be faithful today? Yeah, okay, well then we're going to be faithful going forward and that should be all that it takes. Absolutely. You know, so. Absolutely. Now, I was watching Wendy Williams, I believe it was like a couple days ago, oh. and well, she, she, had, she had a lot to say. She was talking about Mary to Medicine. Mm. She was talking about... Well, good for Wendy. She's yeah. finding an interesting topic. She, she okay. is. And she was talking about Quad, and I can't remember exactly what she said, but I guess Quad tweeted something in um, about how if you don't want to see negative TV, then stop supporting it. You know, she said, you know... And Wendy kind of felt like, you know, she doesn't really want to watch Married to Medicine because she's like, you guys did all that education. Yeah. You're, you're up on well, another level. what does that level. mean? You know, but that's the issue that I have. And I would love to sit down with Wendy and really have that conversation because it doesn't matter. You can be the most educated person and still be from the ghetto and it still be in you. Mm -hmm. And if that's something that God ain't taken up out of you, mm -hmm. then baby, or taken up out of you. If that's something that God has not taken out of you, mm -hmm. then... Guess what you you are? You're an educated ghetto woman. Okay? And I just, I, I hated that. I felt like that was the biggest situation that we had first season. Everybody put the, the doctors on this, in this bubble. Where it was Especially like. Especially when the fight. Oh, happened. yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah. wives do this. The doctors do that. But this season actually showed that, you know what? There's some ghetto doctors. <laughs> and there's some doctors that just don't act like what you would expect them to act. Mm -hmm. But that's who they are outside of their profession. Mm -hmm. Okay? A person is not what they do. Right. A per I mean, as far as their career, mm -hmm. that's just their career. Right. You know what I'm saying? My husband's a physician, but he's also a man on the grill. You know what I'm saying? He also is a person that, that loves to hang out and have fun with his wife. He's not his job. And, and I think people get kind of confused, you know, by that. And they start thinking that, you know, you're supposed to be some way because you've gotten a certain level of education. No, you're supposed to answer questions a certain way. You're supposed to talk a certain way. But... It but when, when you're pushed, I, yeah, I think when that goes pushed, to say. Yeah, when Wendy Williams is pushed. You know, she might have said something, I'm sure, at some point in her life that she just wished she could take back, you sure. know. But at the end of the day, it happens. And, you know, do I agree 
with the negativity around Megan Married to Medicine? No. I don't. I wish it could be more positive. I love it. I love the cabin trip because it was more positivity than what we normally show. But the reality is, it's on Bravo. They like drama. Everybody watching Bravo is not tuning in so that they can watch, uh, what is it, uh, We TV or anything else right. where they're where they're you know doing all the cooking shows and you know and even with the cooking shows there's drama nowadays. Right. I remember when they had Master Chef and he used to tell them shut up, curse them out. You know you're like it's a cooking show. So come on now, it's like it was you know come on now stop. It's TV and we I mean we love it. You yeah, know, the ratings yeah. are there and and I guess it is what it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know your husband has a. Something outside was yeah, Nomad. Yeah, we had Nomad MD. We still do. Nomad MD is still doing functioning very well, actually, because they received a contract with one of the hotels here. So whenever someone gets sick, they call them and they rush over. And uh, we also, yeah, and we have some, um, some you know, clients that are live in the area that you know, basically, we tend to their family. But outside of Nomad MD, we're coming out with some other things like this um, upcoming year, his infusion clinic. That's going to be awesome. Hopefully, we'll bring that out next season. More information on that. What is that? It's basically like there's a couple here in Atlanta, but let's say you're pregnant mm -hmm. and you just you're dehydrated. You're like, I need to go to the hospital. Really, do you want to go pay an ER bill? No, you don't. You just really need some fluids. So you come in and you can go in into their into the infusion clinic and they'll give you fluids or let's say you hung over infusion clinic get some fluids. So That's can you tell us anything about the re reunion or girl the reunion is is like I said I I said it earlier today because I had another interview and I said the same thing that bottom line is if I look at all the episodes the reunion tops them all. What do throw away the episodes <laughs> you you gonna keep watching the reunion over and over again not to miss something. You know, they cut that mug into two episodes. It could have been three. It was amazing. And then even the sneak peeks that come on, it's like basically where they do um, unseen footage. Mm -hmm. They did a whole nother episode of that. Oh, my goodness. Girl, you're going to be sitting there like, what? It, 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 it's amazing. It, it, they really are. Those, these, the final three episodes are going to blow your mind. Which is good because it sets us up for next season, right? Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. We are yeah. excited about okay. this season. <laughs> Girl, please. I'm excited because I just feel like everybody now knows everybody. Yeah. And we're all at a place where we're like, okay, all right, mm -hmm. let's do this. Let's do this. You ready? Because okay. you yeah, I came with it. Okay, this season for you sure. know. And so next season, I already know it's going to be a whole nother song.